Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today, we're going to do some router work on this hungry buzzard, vulture, or whatever he is. And the idea is to route it all out. Everything we can see will route everything, everything out, just leaving the little lines around the framework and so and so. Now, originally, I was going to route out the belly section, the scarf, and the face and neck area basically just leaving the wings and this side there and then just put resin in the rest of it but i've modified it slightly and made myself an extra line all the way around so we can make a little barrier come framework and we're gonna inlay everything with a resin you can use paint if resin is not your thing i just find it easier just to pour some resin in there than to actually paint it but that's just my personal choice now, as always for me, we've printed it off. We've got it onto our recycled pine. This would have been the side of a wardrobe or a small desk at one time. It does have a slight bevel in it, very very slightly. I don't know if it's going to interfere with the routing. That's just because it's been in the cold shed. Hopefully, when we go inside, when it's a bit warmer, it should uh, straighten itself out or be in well. So we've got our template on there. We've put it in place. I've turned it slightly to get it on and just to make sure we miss out all these nasty knots. And those that are left in the wood will be in the area that we're going to route out. Good old carbon paper underneath for me. And literally just draw around it. Took a while on this one because there's a lot to do. But once you've done all that, it's all there. Printed out, shall I say, drawn out. And there's our little template that we're going to use for today. You can just about get it in. It's a good size. It measures in at 18 inches by 13 inches across. Now normally... I just shade in the areas that we're going to remove. For some reason, I just got a pen and put loads of crosses on it. So it gives a rough idea. I'll just get right in there. You can see basically all those crossed out areas are what we're going to have to remove. And you can see from like, like I say, we made a little barrier all the way around. And we modified this slightly just so we can incorporate resin into the full piece. It's an hard way of doing things. I'm your man for it. <laughs> anyway, so it's all ready on our piece of wood there. Now, as always for me, I like to use these CNC bits. 20 degrees, 15, 30s. Nice eBay or Amazon. Now, there is different bits out there. You might prefer a profile bit, a liner bit. I just like to use CNC bits, basically because they're cheap and they do the job. If you've got the money to spend on a profile bit, by all means, go and purchase one. Now your profile bits do come with a small shaft, a 3.175. That's the same size of a Dremel. And they will fit in a Dremel, no problem. But for a quarter inch router, that has a shank of a quarter inch, you need an adapter, reducer, collet. And that's basically just a tube like so. And you just slide that into there. That's now made that a quarter inch shaft. So that will fit your router, no problem. We'll set it to about three millimeters, we don't have to go too deep. We are pouring resin into this. I don't see the point of going really deep and just wasting resin. It's not cheap to purchase. And so we'll do all the lines. So we'll go all the way around inside the lines here and outside the lines on that one there. I'll never route out on the line itself. Always up to the line. Once we've done all the lines on everything we see, nice steady job this one. We'll pop on an end milling bit. I use these to clear out on all my projects. And I don't think we'll have any issues with this pine today. We can pick one that's a good size, nothing too complicated on here. And that just slots into your same adapter collet. That's now fit your router. And we can set it to the same depth, which is three millimeters. Like I say, I'll just scurry over here quickly. I made a little depth gauge like that. And that's the same depth, same thickness, should I say. Three millimeters of your CNC bits or end milling bits. And that's deep enough plenty of what we want today so that's our depth we're going to work at obviously we've done the cnc side of things we've popped that into the router we've set it to the same depth and then we will use this to clear out all these areas that have got the little cross crosses on it'll come out quite quickly with that no problem if it is a little bit slow i use these double flute straight flush bits i will put a description at the end for all the bits ebay again that would be too aggressive that clears out good on big projects but if you come into these little sections here, that would snap that off no problem, not even thinking about it. 
So be careful of how aggressive they are. We'll basically just put a small one on, one eighth, I do believe, and we'll use that to remove the bigger sections. So CNC bits for the lines, end milling bits to clean out with, and if it's a slow process, and I'm certainly in no rush, we'll go for the straight flush bits to clear out as well. Okay, let's set this all up on the router. We'll route all this out, tidy up, give it a nice clean out, and then we're going to cut it out on a scroll saw. We'll talk about that near the time. Okay, let's start routing this one out. You can see from that everything's nicely done with those CNC bits so it's just a simple case of popping an end milling bit on because a nice size one like that we'll remove the CNC bit that was a new new bit by the way and simply just slot that in like so we'll set it to the same depth three millimeters notice I've removed a fair bit of sections here so we use it as our little depth gauge so we're basically set it in to that depth and start removing all these areas we'll do that next Right, you can see from that, we've more or less gone all the way round with those end milling bits. They've worked fine, no problem. What we lost out with the CNC bit, we've compensated for with these little end milling bits. And they are brilliant because they route out the side areas up to where we've gone with this CNC bit. And also, they give you a fairly smooth base, as you can see from that. Now, I've left one little section there for now, only because... We mentioned the straight flush bits, double fluted, basically a couple of blades on either side, apart from the smaller one that just says a single one. So I'm just going to pop it on just to finish this last leg off on this side here, just so you can see them actually working. They have a quarter inch shaft on them, so you don't need the adapter collet for this one. So we'll quickly put this in the router and then we can just finish that last one to show you. And then we'll be on for cutting it out on a scroll saw 
before we actually do a general tidy up I like to use a flexor cable like this one here with a nice flat bottomed engraving bit and I'll just go around and literally just give it a tidy up it doesn't need a lot it's come out fairly nice and then we'll do a little bit of sanding down and just generally just round off the edges just a little bit just so it's not so sharp to the touch but we'll just pop this in for now and just remove that last section there Right, we removed that last section with those straight flush bits. To be honest, it came out a lot easier with the end milling bits. I'm just trying to show you different bits you can use, and it more or less looks exactly the same. But the end milling bits for me, remember, these are only the bits I use. CNC bits, end milling bits. You can look out for profile bits, spiral up cuts, bits, V grooves liner bits there's all sorts out there it all depends what your pocket size is and actually what you want to do with your projects these are all just little fun projects for me they're just just so much to keep my mind active and to keep me uh give me something of interest to do so i'm not personally not bothered about fancy bits and fancy woods and all the rest of the finishes what you see with me unfortunately is what you get that's just the way it is okay now we're going to cut this all out. You could leave it on here if you wanted to. You could have routed out a nice little frame. We might just about squeezed it in and remove the back section slightly. Or you could just left it like that and actually fill it in with your resin and sand it all flush and then do a nice clear coat over the old piece. You have plenty of options. I just like to incorporate the scroll saw and the router to make a nice little scrouter project. So... For the scroll saw side of things, you can literally more or less just see we've got a little pencil line around there. That's going to be our little framework. It's a little bit narrow, so I'm going to sand all this down first and make it slightly wider. I don't know if you can just about get it in there without knocking the tripod. That's a thickness I want. Some of these areas, it's just a little bit too thin for me. So we're going to slightly widen them. So a quick sanding down, quick pencil, draw all the way around. And then we'll cut it out on the scroll saw. Now, just quickly for those that's not used one, you get three types of blades. You get a standard pin blade, and it comes with a pin at both ends. Perfect for this project, because there's nothing too complicated. You'll just cut all the way around. They come on your more cheaper saws. They do a pinless blade. Obviously, no pins on either end like that. Ideal for finer details. If you were going to cut this out on a scroll saw, and let's say you want to remove that eye section there. You will drill your pilot hole and then feed your little pinless blade into it. Whereas if you're using pin blades, you just won't get in because those pins are in the way. So find out what's best for your little projects. Now for me personally, I use spiral blades. The teeth are spiraled all the way around like so. I'm going to get in there. No, not today, not to worry. But they are spiraled all the way around. Whereas these two blades, pinless and pinned, you want the teeth facing towards you. It wants to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. Where the spiral, they are spiraled all the way around. They're ideal for projects like this. Because with these blades, you're going to have to feed your wood. So you would saw down there. And you'd have to turn that, to cut that bit. Turn, turn, twist, 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 all the way around. This is too big to turn around on a standard scroll saw. Or even on a scroll saw. Whereas with spiral blades, you don't turn the wood at all. We can basically just start here and we can just feed that round like so. And we don't have to turn the wood at all. So they just work for me, they're not for everybody. So find a blade that suits you. So we'll cut it out next on a scroll saw. Pegasus number five for me. I have to use these adapter clamps on my old scroll saw. You might have the fancy ones. 
where well, you have little clamps that just clamp it top and bottom okay quick sanding down we'll redraw the line and then we'll cut this one out before we tidy it all up Right, you can see from that, we've made it all the way around with that Pegasus number five spiral blade. And we've not lost anything and everything's still intact. Just about make out from there. I do apologize for the lighting in my little shed. I keep promising myself that I'll order some lights and I have some on the way. But wintertime videos, the lighting just isn't so fantastic. But you make do with what you've got. So we've cut it all out nicely. You can want to see from that. Now for me, the next stage is simply just to give it a general tidy up. I'm going to go around these edges. Do away with those little pencil lines we can see. I like to use these cheap engraving bits. If you go on eBay or Amazon, just put in Dremel engraving bits. You'll come out with these non-Dremel bits. And they work fine. I find one with a nice little flat bottom, like so. That just attaches to a cheap eBay again, flexi cable, which attaches to the end of my Dremel over there. And we'll turn that on, and that just lets us get into right these right tight areas all the way around the old thing. It doesn't take long once you get into a little routine. And then we have a good old bit of sandpaper just to round off those edges and get rid of those pencil marks. And we'll also come back in again with the mouse sander. Nice general tidy up. And then we'll look into what kind of finish we're going to put on before we start putting the resin in. We'll clean up now. Right, that's enough sanding down and general tidying up for me. We've done the front and the back. We've got rid of all our little knobblies there on the side. So everything's all nicely cleaned out, as you can see. Hopefully. And we're good to go. So just before we get to the resin side of things, I just want to darken this wood down just a little bit. And you guessed it, it's going to be good old boiled linseed oil for me. I was going to put a stain on at one time and originally I was going to paint it all black, all this surround black. But remember, this is all going to be black, all this and all this in here. And the black against the black, it just wouldn't stand out so good. So I'm just going to literally do boiled linseed oil, like I just say, and it's a simple case of putting it on. Doesn't matter where we get it into all the grooves, we give it a nice good soaking. Then I'll just let it sit for a couple of days. Let it dry out before we start putting the resin in. Before that, we will spray with some varnish. But we'll talk about that near the time. But for now, we're just going to cover it all in. This won't affect the resin whatsoever once it's all nicely dried. And boiled linseed oil dries a lot quicker than your raw linseed oil. But just make sure we get those side walls in. Just enough so when we fill up with resin... We've actually got the side sections done with the oil as well. And not forgetting the side bits. You'll see they'll go a lot darker. And get inside those little nuts and crannies there. And give it a good 
going over. Once it's all on, quick wipe down, and then we'll leave it for a couple of days to dry out. Okay, so I'll finish this off. And when we come back, we'll spray on a little bit of varnish. Right, it's been a couple of days. This is all dry and near enough for what we want for our little project today. And you can see it's just darkened those frameworks down just slightly enough so it'll stand out nice against the black and the white and the red and whatever you. So the next stage now, remember you could paint this just as easy. You could paint all the insides of this, give it a nice quick sanding over and then paint your lines separately. But for me, I'm just going to use resin today, mixed in with just cheap acrylic paints. And it'll just be a simple case of pouring it all into the separate sections as we see here. Now stop the resin or paint bleeding into your side walls of your wood. You imagine you've routed down there, so you've left that three millimeter lip. On some woods, I don't have a lot of issue with mine, I must admit, but I always like to just spray a bit of varnish on first, or there is wood sealers that you can brush into there and it soaks into the side and seals it all. And that way, when you put your paint in or your resin, it won't bleed into these side walls like a straw. You imagine these grains of wood running in lines like that all made of straws and we've cut into the straw ends so we've left that all open now so your paint or your resin could soak into those side sections and then show up on the front so you don't get a nice crispy line so you want to seal it with something be it proper wood sealer or whatever i'll just use any varnish i can find doesn't matter if it's paint factory 151 Anything that's on sale at the time is what I'll use. And it will just be a simple case of spraying this all over. One, it gives a nice, well I say nice, give a little bit of a shine to the wood and the finish. Plus it will seal the wood and hopefully stop any of those bubbles coming up through the resin. And like I've just said, stop it bleeding into the side walls. So I will go outside and do this, but it's just a simple case of giving it a nice covering like that. You see those... That boiled linseed oil has gone darker as well, so that's a nice touch. And we get this different angles just to get in at different and make sure we get some onto those side walls. And we'll also go all the way around the edges. I'll go outside and do that. Once that's dry, we'll go indoors and find some resin and basically just start filling this up. It's going to be a simple case of pouring the resin in literally nearly to the top of our routed out area, and that will be done for me. Other options, you could overfill it slightly and sand it all down and then flush coat the full piece with resin or spray it with a nice varnish. But for me, I just still want to be able to feel the routed out areas. So a quick spray over. Once it's dry, it will be resin time. Right, resin time. Hopefully you can see from that, we've just got enough shine on there, look. Just to seal all those side walls. And just give the wood a little bit more shine. Now you can work on that as long as you want to. But for my little projects, three or four sprays of that is ample for what I need. So now we're literally just going to fill it all in nicely with resin. Not quite to the top. And as the resin cures, it will shrink down very slightly. And that should just give us enough... So we can still feel the routed out sections. Now the resin for me today is Vista One. I've used this on a lot of my projects. I've also used amazing, amazing clear cast and craft resin, three or four different types, but for today, Vista One. It's a two-part resin, like all epoxy resins. Part A, your resin. Part B, your Ardner. The good thing about this mix, it's a one-to-one. -one. So basically, whatever we put in of A, we put the same amount in of B, your Ardner, and just mix the two together. I use these cheap little plastic party cups. They're ideal because they do have grooves on the side. And I tend to mark it off with a marker pen. A for my resin, and I've counted up five little notches. And obviously, B, the Ardner, five little notches, the same. Put one into there, put one into there, mix the two together, and then we can add our colours. Now the colours for me today are just acrylic paints, nothing fantastic, just cheap, cheap acrylic paints. 
we've got what we want the blacks the red the orange a bit of yellow and there's some white going somewhere and there's our white to go with it and we just put a little bit in with the resin mix it around i use these party knife forks and spoons they're ideal because they have a nice little lip on like that so when you're done your mixing you can just scoop it out and if you need to get to them tighter areas it's ideal for that, no problem whatsoever. There is different colours out there. Powders, inks, dyes, pigments. I've got some here that I've never used anymore. I'm just quite happy with the cheap old acrylic paints. Okay, so we'll mix this off camera. Follow your instructions. Have a nice mask on. Put your gloves on and you want plenty of ventilation. Resin can be a bit funny if you don't know what you're doing. So we'll fill up these two little markers. Mix it, drop the colour in, and basically start filling this one in. Right, that's all the resin in now. And as it's been going in, you literally just get a lighter, one of these, or one of these, and you just skim across very lightly, like so. And that will just help release any balls that you've got lying around in your resin. And I'll come back five minutes time and just give it another quick skimming over. like so and that's it this is all we can do for now so you want to get a nice cover keep it all nicely covered leave it a good 24 hours plus for 48 hours if possible and then we'll come back and see how the hungry buzzard is looking you'll get a better look of the colors and so and so once you go outside and get some natural lighting and we'll ever wander down to the shed so that's all we can do for now. So if you just, just leave this and then come back 24 to 48 hours and we'll see what we've got. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now, obviously, we just poured the resin in. We had nothing else to do because we'd varnished it all previously and we've sealed all that wood nicely. And you can more or less see from that We've got no bleeding into any of the wood at all, so no problem with that. And that's all we can do, really. This little project is finished. We've got something to his eyes here. There might be the odd little speckle. I know it's the odd little speckle of dust down here, so we're just getting the right lighting. Just about there. And if anything, the feet could add a little bit more in, and we probably put a little bit too much in on the white on the belly there. But overall, it's a project. Some of the colours did go a bit funny, and I don't know what it was. It's old resin, but if you get right close up, I don't even get it on this. No, it's not even worth talking about. But there's a couple of little, just funny colour really. I'm not too comfortable with the colour, the way it's turned out. But it's certainly done its job, and you can see from that, we've got a nice project. And it's literally just 24 hours later. You want to leave this for another three or four days at least, just to make sure... You have got it nice and solid. And that's it. Hungry Buzzard is complete. So he measures in at 18 inches by 13 inches across. It's routed out on recycled pine using CNC bits for the lines and end milling bits for the clear out. And we actually used a straight flush bit on that bit, if you remember. And then we used cheap acrylic paints mixed in with resin, poured in. Before that, we popped on some Boiled linseed oil, just to darken the sides down. And then we sprayed it with a nice little varnish, just cheap varnish, just to seal those side walls. 
Now to give it a little bit of shine on the wood and that'll stop your resin from bleeding into the side. So everything's nicely done. There we go, just a nice little fun project. Hungry Buzzard routed out on pine inlaid with a resin. Thank you very much for watching.